For today's episode of I Swoon Unplugged, I'm gonna make for you a tart that I am so obsessed with. I made it all summer long last season. I was first introduced to it from Daphne Oz. I went over her house for an outdoor kind of lunch and she made it with plums and it completely blew my mind. The plums were sweet and tart, but the shell was almost savory, made with olive oil, and the texture was like super crumbly. And I immediately became obsessed with it and I continually made it. And I felt like here we are in spring and the world seems to be coming back to normal, hopefully, and hopefully we're gonna be gathering together. So I thought this was a really good opportunity to share this recipe with you. It is so easy and super versatile and flexible. I'm gonna make it today because they are so seasonal right now and I found them at the farmer's market. I'm gonna make it with rhubarb. They're kind of tart and they're so spring specific. And I just thought that the combination of flavor with that savory shell and the sweetness that is gonna get combined and crumbled over it with butter and sugar and flour would be a really yummy thing to share with you guys. The reason I love this so much is that the tart shell gets made just in a bowl. You don't need any fancy equipment. You can make it in a pinch. It comes together in less than an hour. I'm heating already a 425 degree oven. We're gonna put all of those ingredients together in a bowl. We're gonna press it into the tart shell. I would say the fanciest thing that you need is a removable tart pan. All you need is your fingertips. You need a fork to stir it. You're gonna press it right in and you're gonna put whatever fruit you use. Peaches are amazing, plums are amazing. I'm sure any type of berries would be delicious. So you put the fruit in the tart shell and then you crumble on top of it that mixture I just spoke of, pop it in the oven and boom, you're done. So I'm gonna take you through this process. I really think you're gonna love this one and let's get baking. All right, so I've already gone ahead and cut about a pound of rhubarb. I had a little bit less, so hopefully I could do okay with that. I have some all purpose flour here. We're gonna do one and a half cup of flour. I have our sugar and our salt here. I went ahead and I poured one half cup of olive oil. And right here, I have two tablespoons of milk. I also have some almond extract, and I love that flavor. If you don't have almond, you can certainly use vanilla extract. So I'm gonna do a half a teaspoon. Mix that together. And then here I have our flour and our sugar and our salt. So I am just gonna pour the liquid into our flour. So as with any dough, you really don't wanna overwork it. So try to combine it without stirring too much. And I'm gonna do it in batches. I did the first little batch and the second. Mix until it's combined, no more. Use your fork rather than continuing to stir. And then I have a little bit left. I'm gonna go along the edges. Now we are going to make the crumble. I have three quarter cup of sugar right here, two tablespoons of flour, a quarter teaspoon of salt. Here I have two tablespoons of butter. So I'm gonna mix those dry ingredients, the flour, the sugar, the salt, and I'm basically just gonna pinch it together with those cold pieces of unsalted butter. So this is going to be this crumbly mixture that we're gonna sprinkle over the rhubarb. It's going to make the heart rhubarb a little bit sweeter. Okay, so I'm gonna put just a quarter teaspoon of the almond extract. It really goes a long way. So here we have our removable bottom part shell and then here is that mixture that we just made i'm so simply going to put i would say 
I'm gonna start with about three quarter of the amount. I'm gonna leave a little bit because as mentioned, the original recipe calls for an 11 inch tart pan and this is a nine inch. So I just wanna be cognizant to make sure I don't make the shell too thick. So we're pressing it in so easy. You essentially want this shell to be about one eighth of an inch thick. So whatever pan you have is fine as long as you get it to be one eighth inch. Okay, so the whole pan is filled now, but I wanna go around the edges and make sure that where the bottom meets the side is pressed firmly in and also that along the sides, the dough is pressed into those fluted side walls. So I'm pressing the top and pressing the side and going all the way around. Anything excess, just brush off the top. All right, so we have our rhubarb here. I think that I'm going to attempt to do this a pinwheel circular type shape where all the points meet at the center but I'm not really sure you can also just like toss it in haphazardly whatever you're comfortable with it will work and look beautiful and taste delicious So as I mentioned, this recipe calls for about one pound of the rhubarb. If you're using peaches, probably three to four peaches, depending on their size. All right, I think that looks pretty. So here is our crumble. Give it one last little mix. And then I'm literally just gonna Put it right over our rhubarb. It might seem like more than is necessary, but I promise you it will evenly disperse beautifully. Okay, how simple was that to put together? It's gonna go in the oven 425 degrees, for 35 minutes. I'm gonna pop it in right now. So our tart is just about finished, but I just wanted to share with you guys that my entire look is from my Teresa, and I'm gonna make it shoppable on iSwoon.com with this post along with this recipe. But let's check on our tart right now. It's a little over 35 minutes. Your greatest indicator will be when the exterior of the tart shell is nice and golden and all of that fruit and crumble mixture is bubbling. So let's give it a look. Ah, oh, it's perfect. Oh my goodness, that looks so good. All right, so it's bubbling, it's golden. So I let this go a little bit closer to 40 minutes, but just keep an eye starting at 35 minutes. It could go up to 40, it could go up to 45. 